thanks so much, Dimitri and Costa, for uh, for this wonderful talk and for all the talking points I actually put in the in the chat that um, the the points that you made in the keynote address we would probably like to extend into a podcast with Haba and HACC uh, probably in the fall because there are a lot of extending um, subcategories to this topic that really do need to be addressed and are very critical to progress in general. Right. I hope that we will uh, be able to continue the discussion in the future. Um, but for now, we're going to continue on and welcome the first time moderator, uh, Patricia Doulis, who is the director of the College and Career uh, Center at the High School for Art and Design in New York City. Patricia, I'm passing you the microphone. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here, first time moderator. Um, so our second panel will be focused on sustainable businesses in the creative enterprises. So we have two wonderful speakers, Athena Andreavi, who is a singer songwriter, businesswoman, and also a very big activist in environmental mindfulness and awareness. And she's been actually able to merge the two passions to um, create more awareness, which we'll hear about in a little bit. And Costadina Gayozzi, who is a media marketing guru in a world where we know that it's forever changing. Um, so our first question to get right into it, is can you just share a little bit about how you decided to pursue this career and how your college experiences may have influenced that? Um, I think now we can start with you. Hi everyone, uh, it's a great honor to be here. Um, so I come from a business background. Um, my family, uh, typical Greek uh, family uh, owned business and they wanted me to join it. And so, um, but my dream was um, to be a singer and a musician and a composer. And so I studied business initially to please my family. And I'm glad I did because it informed a lot of what I do now. I understood how the world works, how to uh, create a sustainable business. Actually, one of our teachers uh, got a, a classroom full of business students to meditate. And it really informed my worldview because, um, you know, mindfulness is at the core of everything we do, like to really uh, reflect and listen to that inner voice and that inner wisdom that actually guides us and then using the mind as a tool to proceed from there. So, you know, my dream was to become a singer. And so I, after my business studies, I went on to be a singer and a composer and um, started my own record label. That's, I guess, where my uh, business degree helped. So I'd say to all you uh, younger people out there, you know, it, it is possible, it is possible to um, merge your, um, your dream and what you really wanna do with a sustainable and successful business on all fronts. Uh, but what's also possible, and it's been so inspiring speaking to, uh, hearing everyone to this morning and speaking to people before, is that, you know, um, and I agree with Dimitri, climate uh, change is our biggest crisis that we're facing right now, right? It's at the core of all our crises. Because if our, basically our very survival is starting, right? Because when resources dwindle, then more war ha ha more wars break out right for the scarce resources more inequality so we need to find in all kinds of business and all uh, endeavors um, those win-wins and that's what's gonna create a sustainable um, future um, maybe I'll stop here for now I don't know if I answered your question no I think that's great I think it's important to know that sometimes you know our our path might not be so direct to where we want to get to but if you're learning along the way right your business degree ended up helping eventually so Costadina, can you answer a little bit about um, how you pursued your career and how college may have influenced those experiences for you yeah hi so uh, my name is Constantina Kelly D um, I work for um, Facebook, but I'm a contractor through Cognizant, so um, I do work for the Greek market of um, Facebook's business manager, and um, yeah, so I am a recent graduate from college, actually, I only graduated last year, um, I did my undergrad at University College Dublin in Ireland, and that is where I am at the moment, actually, um, and I finished last year in politics and economics, and I got my first job at Cognizant and at Facebook, um, and I've been there for the past eight months. Um, I, it wasn't really exactly what I was like, you know, trying to pursue um, long term, but it is something, it's a job that gives you a big foundation. And, you know, like knowing Greek, of course, is a huge advantage because it is one of those um, languages that are not 
well known by many people. So it is a nice um, thing to have on your CV and you are um, more attractive to bigger companies who need that expertise. Um, yeah, so I ideally am like looking to get my you know, work experience, working part of a team in a corporate setting so that in the future I can move somewhere bigger to like a bank or um, even to political organizations. Um, college um, was a big factor for me because I joined a lot of MEUs, a lot of MUNs, which are essentially simulations of the European Union and the United Nations. Um, and so for me, that kind of gave me more of an understanding of how, you know, the world works. I also did an internship at a bank and, um, you know, it all gave me a flavor of what was to come and um, helped me solidify my decision for my career path. Great, thank you. I, I love what you said about eventually you want to go on something bigger. And I think it's important for young professionals to remember their stepping stones, right? You're, you're, you're going along the way and you're grabbing skills and resources and things and just have, giving yourself exposure while you're in college. So that kind of leads to my next question of what skills and qualities do you think are the most like important and most crucial in maintaining us and uh, maintaining and also in a growing business and your crafts? I guess, I think, I think you could go first. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'd say flexibility, um, ability to adjust uh, because things are constantly changing and uh, persistence and patience were probably the two qualities that served me the most. I would say always follow through and be impeccable with your word um, and live according to your principles. Long-term, that's gonna serve you the best. Uh, and also every time, and this has served me in my life, every time I'm about to do something, um, I ask myself, what matters most to me? You know, before making a business decision or any decision, how is that gonna impact others? What are my values? You know, we're not separate. Great, thank you, yes. Um, Cosadina? Yeah, um, I was actually gonna say many of those. And then the last thing I was gonna say, especially for young people, it's very important to have willingness to learn and to demonstrate your willingness to learn. Um, so, you know, being like a sponge, being very absorbent and um, always listening and showing that um, you want to lead in the future and you want to grow and learn. I think that's very important, um, not only for your own growth, but to you know convince others that you are willing to grow as well. Definitely, your mindset is definitely important in how your you know your journey unfolds. Um, how has your field changed, and how have you been able to maintain you know um, being a vital member in your profession? Sabina. Yeah, so it's changed dramatically um, in my, I've had about a 15 year career um, and it's, it went from me touring and selling CDs on the road <laughs> to now, obviously, uh, everything being completely digital. I had to move three to three different countries to make it work. I live in Los Angeles now. I was in London before. Um, and partly I moved uh, because I realized that that model was no longer working. So I tried to adjust. And even though my family all live in Greece, so London was closer, um, I, I made the move and I'm very happy now, but uh, you know, I, I started getting more songs in film and TV. Um, you know, you have to adjust, like I was saying earlier, but also it's amazing when, um, you know, you incorporate mindfulness. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there meditate, but mindfulness can be, it doesn't have to be, can be in, you could do it in so many different ways, but the, the whole point is that you reflect, you listen to that inner voice because our inner wisdom guides us in such a better way than starting from the, you know, a more kind of theoretical mind, you know, by just having those quiet moments to really listen, I was able to kind of know what my next step is or feel like follow my instinct that that guts that kind of knows and then, of course, I'm like, okay, yeah, I could get the songs in film on TV. But the, 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 my gut was telling me, you got to move there. And what happened when I moved here is I found similar like-minded people. And so there's a bunch of artists and um, actors and other creatives who joined this uh, big, for example, organization. It's not an organization. It's kind of like a, a coalition. It's called the Plastic Pollution Coalition. So we're all doing stuff to reduce um, single-use plastic. Um, so we, uh, for example, do plastic free tours. So we use, you know, bottles like this, stainless steel, make sure there's as little, little single use plastic as possible, you know, on tour. Um, and basically I write songs about these issues and I'm hoping through my music because that's my gift. And we all have beautiful 
uh, unique gifts that we can give this world. So it's like finding those gifts. And I write uh, songs to inspire through these issues, um, uh, hopefully, <laughs> uh, and start conversations. Sometimes, you know, you'll you'll say something that might be a little controversial for someone, but at least it's, and like uh, you said, Constantine, I, I totally agree, listening. We need to listen. It's so key to listen to each other because we're, we're one, we're the same, but we're also very different. So um, listening is, is really key. Um, and yeah. I was gonna say, would you, speak, would you say that the mindfulness approach, you know, clearly you had perseverance because you moved here and you moved there and you, had your, you were set on your goal, right? Um, do you feel like the mindfulness also has helped you within obstacles within your field? Absolutely. I meditate every morning. Um, other people pray, other people, you know, surf or write music, whatever. But for me, just to sit quietly with myself every morning um, has given me incredible strength. And at times where I feel discouraged and there's been so many slaps in the face and so many times in my career and now with the environment when I see things are really, really in a bad shape. Um, but then it, that gives me that inner strength to carry on. Um, and I want to bring an example of a wonderful woman, um, Christiana Figueres, maybe some of you know her. Um, she works behind the scenes. She's one of the main architects of the Paris Agreement. She uh, often quotes Thich Nhat Khan as her inspiration. He is a mindfulness teacher. And she said she just couldn't have done everything she's done uh, without like just having some kind of inner practice, whatever it is for people, uh, but some kind of um, going back to that place of wisdom that's within each one of us. And she was able to do all the great things she's done and um, speak to people, but listen to people. And then Paris Agreement became possible. Um, and, uh, you know, she has that beautiful, she encompasses and, and that beautiful um, female quality of listening and uh, that we all have, men and women. That's great. So also kind of having an outlet for yourself to avoid burnout in your field, right? Especially when you're constantly having to be creative, it's, um, it's, it's very different than a more rigid kind of field. Um, Cosa, do you have anything to add? Um, you know, I'm quite of a newbie in the professional world, so I feel like um, I really don't have much to add to this question just because like there hasn't been much time for there to be such a drastic change. You know, if you discount current events of the past four months, there hasn't been much really that has changed, you know, in my professional experience. What jobs, opportunities should like young professionals be seeking out? I know you guys spoke about a little bit about how much exposure you gave yourself during college. I'm assuming you thought that was beneficial. What, you know, programs or curriculars should somebody be pursuing? And what um, I think that um, leadership um, activities are very important to have just because, you know, it shows that you are willing to take responsibility and it also teaches you how to um you know, be more responsible. It teaches you how to um, do things better and more efficiently. And also um, socializing as much as possible, whichever way might feel comfortable for you, only because it helps you meet other people, see how other people think, see how other people work. Because in the end, you know, even in the professional realm, we're all just people who have ideas and we execute them in different ways. And knowing how, you know, to work through that is very important. Thank you. Athena, do you have anything you would like to add or? Yeah, just that um, I think it's very important and more important than ever to have as much general knowledge as possible. So I agree any extracurricular anywhere where you can expose yourself to the different things. You know, we are afraid of the things we don't know. So become familiar with what you don't know. Speak to people from different races, speak to people from different classes, speak to people from different countries, from different professions. You have so much to learn and to give by listening. Uh, and that's how we're gonna go forward. And also I would say whatever business you're in or about to go in, really explore uh, what win-wins are possible for the environment. Because um, the environment is our home, it's not separate. If we mess it up, we don't have another planet to go to. So it's really at the very core. Um, Win-wins are not only possible, but, and lots of corporations and companies and every, you know, so many are doing it really successfully, both financially, actually true win-wins are financially successful and uh, successful. But when we're talking about sustainable business, that's the only way to go forward. Something that's not environmentally sustainable is not gonna be successful long-term. So really invest in those win-win-wins or triple wins, as they say. Uh, and even if people tell you it's not possible, it is possible. That's just the old way of thinking. Um, Trust yourself, dream big, be ambitious, be like a kid, 
and do it. It's possible. If I didn't have the dreams I have, I wouldn't have done any of this. I'm a little girl from Thessaloniki who ended up in LA doing the things I've done. And I'm like, wow. And if I didn't have those dreams and if I decided that, you know, eh, it's not hard and listen to the old mentality, I would never have done what I've done. So that's just a little example um, of what's possible. And I even have to remind myself this when I get disheartened because I do, it's human. It's part of being a human being. It definitely is. I love that. The old way of thinking, kind of put that on the back burner. It's not no longer relevant, right? Um, so you spoke a little bit about it before, but can you kind of just elaborate on how you used your work as in the musical field to create change in other areas and influence other areas that you may be passionate about? Yeah, so um, I um, one way is uh, writing songs about these issues. It's becoming more and more important to me um, to write, I always write from the heart, but you know, maybe when I was younger, I would write more about heartbreak and a relationship. And as my songwriting evolved, and I became more interested in writing on two or three different levels. So on one level, it could be sound like a song about relationship, but it, it's also a song about um, a spiritual longing and an environmental concern. And I'm becoming more and more explicit. I feel like it's, it's, um, it's just a time where we're all needed. And you know, especially you guys, the younger generation. So I'm trying to do more and more to, to reach younger people um, because these movements will come from you guys, from the young. Um, and we need to change our habits and really think long-term. The short-term thinking doesn't serve us anymore, um, especially because what's mentioned before by Dimitri and others, uh, it's changing so fast and exponentially that we, we just, and we don't know, like, with, with all our amazing technology and minds, great things can, can happen and great change, positive change can happen. But because it's happening so fast, it's also dangerous. Um, so, and it's urgent that we act as fast as possible. So I'm here to support, for example, I'm writing songs now to support some youth movements that are happening. And I'm trying to listen to young people and say, how can I support you with my contacts, with my skills, with my talents? and have those conversations. So um, that's one way, uh, of course, um, uh, you know, there's, there's many, many ways we, we can support, but um, uh, specifically, we all need to look at our talents. And for me, one of them is writing songs and my voice. Um, so that's what I try to, to do. I think it's important. I see this at work all the time when we're planning like post-secondary journeys that students also often feel like they have to pick one path. And I think it's important to take a step back and realize that you can merge things that you're passionate about. You can create change in different areas. Um, because I think I would like to add anything. Yeah. Um, so I've used like my current job because we do work a lot with small businesses. And my sister last year, she had actually started a small business and I was helping her with it. So, you know, like learning things about how we as you know a part of a big business handle and deal with small businesses it kind of also puts things in perspective for me and i cannot actually help my sister with her small business so yeah yeah definitely great taking all as much knowledge along the way um i have a, the one last question if you guys could speak a little bit about maybe how your like professional experiences do you think have been molded or impacting as being like a female in your industries I can go first. Um, I don't think that, um, especially here in Europe, at least, I don't feel like gender is that much um, a big factor, not even in pay or um, in discrimination of, of any sorts. I feel like um, I'm treated equal with, um, you know, my male counterparts. And I see in the workplace, actually, that sometimes as women, we are respected even a bit more and like, you know, there's a bit more leeway for us. Um, with things that we might need. I know other women in our team that have children or um, other women who have, you know, health issues or the sorts um, that a lot of accommodation is made for these things and, you know, no questions are asked, which I think is great. I think it's, we're a little behind there in the States, but um, I mean, uh, yeah, it's wonderful to hear because, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not quite um, uh, like this here, at least in my industry, um, you know, I guess it's not as bad my industry as others because as musicians, there's often a lot of females, uh, but it's, you know, I've come across those uh, issues and I'm very saddened by what's happening um, with a lot of, you know, women's rights and things, but I don't, um, I, I, it's just that it's just important. Like I said before, it comes, I, I just want to keep it more broad. And I just want to say um, no matter what issue it is, 
um, it's, it's just really important to look, to familiarize ourselves with it. So rather than judge, just say, what, what if it was me? What if it was my child? What if it was my friend in that situation? And become friends with those things that scare us because they're unknown. And then from that place, then we are gonna know once you open, you're more open to it and really listen, that's so key to the other person and really empathize and, and approach it with compassion. That's a key word too. Then I think you will know naturally what to do, how to implement that in your business. How can I be uh, more compassionate to my, say if you're a manager, to my um, employee? What, what can I do? Because it's not black or white. Sometimes there's rules, of course, but then th there's ways you can support someone who's whatever, going through whatever it is. Um, and I think that leads me just to one more thing I wanted to say about the importance of giving back to community. And um, I think that, you know, it's, it's really at the, it should be at the core of every business and every effort and every human being's life to give back, whether it's to charity or time or both. Um, but on a spiritual level, I found in my career, work and career and personal life, the moments I've been, I gave the most is that it almost gives a signal to the world that there's abundance. And when you come from that place, so much more comes back. I know that you do it for that because it's important that your intention is just to give, but it's true when you give and you open up so much happens and that space is created for, um, and it, it, people are inspired and it's amazing what people can do when they're truly inspired. Everything's possible. And you're creating a really positive like domino effect. It's great. Um, Cosa, Dina, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, but I did see that Alexandra yeah. had a question for me in the chat and she said, um, if I think that, you know, what I'm experiencing, you know, with the gender um, treatment, whatever in the workplace depends on the type of company or industry. And I do think, yes, 100%. Um, I guess this is one of the perks of working in tech because um, they do try to be as innovative as possible and, you know, as um, helpful as possible with whatever people may need be it a woman, a man, or anything in between. Um, other sectors, um, be it something that is more unskilled labor, like for example, bartending, I know many friends who work as that, or um, you know, other um, non-regulated work fields can you know, have these aspects that are not as inclusive or as um, tolerating to women's needs. Um, however, personally, I haven't had any issues quite yet, so. Hopefully it stays that way. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have, unless you guys want to add anything or touch upon any points. Um, if not, Chris, back to you. Thank you. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for your participation. And thank you again to all our guest speakers for your, uh, your wonderful contributions. To